US Air Force F-16C Viper recently shot down a target drone using a laser-guided 70 millimeter rocket in a test. The important part is that these rockets are generally used for air-to-ground engagement, but in this case was used in air-to-air -air role. US Air Force conducted the experiment to determine the feasibility of using the weapon for shooting down incoming cruise missiles. But the usage will not be limited to cruise missiles and could also be leveraged for destroying small unmanned aircraft, including suicide drones. As per reports, the F-16C assigned to the 85th Test and Evaluation Squadron, part of the 53rd Wing at Eglin Air Force Base in Florida, conducted the test over a range off the coast of the state on December 19, 2019. A BQM-167 target drone was used to simulate a cruise missile threat. In this video, Defense Updates analyzes why F-16C Viper using APKWS-2 70mm rocket for air-to-air -air engagement is a significant step forward. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by War Thunder. If you are, like us, fascinated by military vehicles and technology, I recommend you give War Thunder a try. It's a military vehicle combat game which you can download and play for free on PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One with cross-platform support. It has a huge variety of more than 1,200 playable aircraft, tanks, helicopters and ships from the 1930s to the 1990s, which you can take to battle on land, in the air and at sea on more than 80 theaters of war. War Thunder has been kind enough to offer all Defense Updates viewers a special bonus, which will grant you a free premium tank, aircraft or ship and three days of premium account time for registering using our link in the description below. So take the plunge and join more than 20 million players from around the world. The proliferation of cruise missiles and drone technology has meant that the chances of facing asymmetric threats are much more than it was a decade before. In January 2018, Russian forces faced a drone swarm launched against Kamemem Air Base in Syria. The Russians were able to neutralize most of these. Though the attack was able to inflict limited damage, it indicated that the threat of the drone swarm has arrived. A recent example is the September attack in Saudi Arabia. On September 14th, facilities of Saudi Arabia's oil company Aramco, located in the east of the country, came under attack. As per reports, the raid began around 4 a.m. and drones as well as cruise missiles were used in the attack. There were 18 drones and 7 missiles. The world's biggest oil refinery near the city of Abqiq and a refinery near Qurais, where Saudi's second largest oil field is located, were targeted. The damage was significant and this caused a spike in global oil prices. This kind of scenario can occur in US Air Force bases too. A swarm of drone armed with small explosives and short-range cruise missiles with high explosives could cause massive damage to multi-million dollar warplanes, radars, etc. The adversary could potentially cause a lot of destruction without having to put in significant resources. For example, a Lockheed Martin F-35 Lightning II cost around $80 million a piece and could be easily disabled by a grenade-sized warhead. John Rood, Under Secretary of Defense for Policy, recently stated, We're seeing asymmetric investments in things like swarming UAS technology, like unmanned aerial systems that really fly more like the cruise missiles. It's a serious problem. Rood didn't specifically mention the Saudi attacks, but indications were clear. So it's paramount that the US military addresses the growing challenge of targeting small, basic but potentially lethal drones. US Air Force Colonel Ryan Messer, commander of the 53rd Wing, said in a statement, "...the test was unprecedented and will shape the future of how the Air Force executes CMD cruise missile defense." This is a prime example of how the 53rd Wing is using resources readily available to establish innovative ways that enhance combat capabilities for our combat units. Advanced Precision Kill Weapon System 2 APKWS-2 70mm rocket or AGR-20A was used for this experiment. It's to be noted that the Marine Corps first fielded the laser-guided APKWS-2 in 2008. Since then, a concerted effort has been made to utilize this to counter different threats in a battle space. The weapon can be used deployed from both fixed-wing aircraft and helicopters.
The Advanced Precision Kill Weapon System APKWS, is a designed conversion of Hydra 70 unguided rockets with a laser guidance kit to turn them into precision guided munitions. PGMs. The kit slots in between the standard 70 mm rocket motor and the warhead, allowing for the rapid conversion of existing Hydra 70 unguided rockets into low cost precision guided munitions. The U.S. Air Force did not reveal what warhead and fuse combination was used during the test. There are two basic options. One, an inert warhead for hit-to-kill approach. The rocket will physically ram into the target to destroy it. Two, a high explosive warhead with a proximity fuse. The advantage is that even without a direct hit, the target will be crippled. Images that the Air Force released show that the aircraft taking part in the test were carrying rockets with yellow bands at the front, which would point to a live warhead. The U.S. Air Force has stated that the F-16C had targeted the drone using an onboard targeting pod. Pictures show that the plane was carrying an AN-AAQ-33 Sniper Advanced Targeting Pod during the test. It provides positive target identification, autonomous tracking GPS coordinate generation, and precise weapons guidance from extended standoff ranges. It significantly increases the ability to engage low-flying targets with small radar cross-sections. As per U.S. Air Force, the idea of using APKWS-2 in the air-to-air -air role was the result of an effort to develop a low-cost weapon for aircraft to use in the cruise missile or drone defense role. Currently, U.S. Air Force trains to use AIM-120 Advanced Medium Range Air-to-Air -air Missiles AMRAM, and AIM-9X Sidewinders to engage cruise missile threats as well as drones. The unit price of AIM-120C is around $1.16 million, whereas that of AIM-120D is around $1.3 million. AIM-9X Sidewinders cost $0.6 million each. Using these missiles for taking out inexpensive drones and cruise missiles is not an effective solution. Secondly, a fighter can carry a very limited number of these weapons. So, against a swarm attack, there is a possibility to run out of missiles. Hydra 70 has a unit cost of $2,799. Advanced Precision Kill Weapon System APKWS, which is used to convert Hydra 70 into precision guided munitions costs only around $25,000. So, the package will not be more than $30,000, which is much cheaper when compared to AIM-120 variants and AIM-9 Sidewinders. Another important aspect is that an aircraft can carry many of these. A hard point that would hold a single AIM-120 can carry a pod that can carry 7 or 19 of these rockets. Threats from low-cost drones and cruise missiles is real. Keeping this in view, the test with the APKWS-2 70mm rocket is significant. U.S. military is also developing other techs in parallel for this kind of scenario. One such system is Howler. Howler combines the capabilities of Raytheon's KU Band Radio Frequency System Multi-Mission Simultaneous Radar and Coyote Unmanned Aircraft System. To know more, check the video on the above card. Another endeavor is the use of lasers. The U.S. Air Force recently tested Lockheed Martin's Advanced Test High Energy Asset Anti-Drone Laser. Advanced Test High Energy Asset, or Athena, also the name of the Greek goddess, was used to take out drones. As per reports, the system shot down multiple Class 1 and 2 fixed-wing and rotary drones. It can be said that the U.S. military is moving aggressively to counter the menace of drones and cruise missiles. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.